A very good afternoon to everybody and welcome to all. Um, good afternoon and good morning to all our viewers from the continent. Um, I'm Arun Mukherjee. I have recently replaced Sachin Gore, who was my predecessor. And uh, this is the 30th webinar in our uh, knowledge series for the India EU ICT uh, standards collaboration, standardization collaboration project. And it's in partnership with Etsy of Europe and TSDSI, which is India's SDO. And we are going to dwell on the assessment of applicability of 1M2M in deployments by business in our IoT M2M solutions. Um, uh, while we are waiting for Mr. Sharan Barora, who's had a temporary uh, delay, he would be just joining us. Uh, he would be moderating the uh, 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 session. I have the uh, pleasure and privilege of introducing to you Mr. Andreas Neubacher, who would be making a presentation discussing today's topic. He is the head of IoT standards development at Deutsche Telekom and has been working in telecommunications since 1999. He was responsible for the development of national deployment plans for the 3G radio network. Uh, he joined uh, Deutsche Telekom in 2003 uh, in the standards and IPR management group, where he headed various projects such as for network sharing, self-organizing networks, home NBs, Volta roaming, and interconnection in standards. Uh, Andreas represents Deutsche Telekom in various global organizations like 3GPP, Etsy, IEEE, 1M2M, and has set up and chaired the Open Radio Equipment Interface Industry Specification Group in Etsy. Currently, Andreas is heading research and standardization activities for IoT for Deutsche Telekom Group and is responsible for appropriate standards for M2M and IoT, which are being developed, selected, and introduced within DTAG. His ambition is to build an efficient, scaling, and rich technology ecosystem for the M2M and IoT service area based on global standards to enable new revenue opportunities. Um, I'm very pleased also uh, to introduce our moderator, Mr. Sharad Arora. Welcome, sir. Um, so uh, just to give a quick introduction, sir, and hand over to you. Uh, Mr. Sharad Arora is the co-chair for TSDSI Outreach Committee. He's the chair also of the TSDSI Services and Solutions Study Group. Uh, more notably, he is the founder and MD of Sensorize, which is an M2M service provider with the practice of supplying end-to-end -end solutions in remote and lifecycle management of eSIM and IoT devices. So he's got a tremendous background and experience, uh, including R&D for an office automation major. Uh, he's managed IT and telecommunications services, running the Asia Pacific business of Avas and security solutions, MNC. Um, he's led the incubation of data services and mobile entertainment, m-commerce, location services, mobile security and apps, and IoT solutions. Um, he's worked with such leading names as Modi Xerox, Escotel, Smart Trust, Tele, Tara Tele Services. So welcome to all. And with that, I hand over to uh, Mr. Sharad Arora. A uh, few hygiene uh, uh, points and uh, requests when the speaker is on the all of us will who are speaking also would uh, shut off our mics um, so that there is no disturbance to the speaker uh, currently speaking. And there will be a question and answer session afterwards uh, after Mr. Neubacher has made his presentation. And uh, please do put your questions in the uh, questions box. Uh, Sharadji, I hand it over to you. Thank you. Mr. Mukherjee, and a uh, very warm welcome to you, Mr. Neubacher. I I think it's a fantastic afternoon if you're going to speak on the uh, 1M2M journey and also I presume your experiences with uh, the challenges of IoT business. In fact, I'm coming straight, literally straight from a, a policy meeting which is uh, starting to recommend the new policy regime that is essential to grow to proliferate the IoT market in India. So uh, uh, that on one side, and of course, the fact that we in India have uh, welcomed 1M2M as national standards, transposed first by TSDSI, and then uh, uh, called into being national standards by Telecom Engineering Center, the HIPEX uh, body in India, looking after standardization in telecoms. 
So it sets up quite an interesting session from certainly my point of view, and I'm sure it's going to be the same for many others who are listening in today. Uh, I would like to warmly welcome you and uh, uh, request you to uh, make your uh, presentation uh, describing uh, how you believe the ecosystem is panning out, what you believe are the problems and challenges, and how you believe standardization is uh, essential to reducing the risks and enhancing the benefits. Mr. Norbecker, yours. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks all. Uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, so there's nothing more to left to say. Uh, thanks for having me. And it's, um, it's an honor for me to speak here in, in India. So, so again, good afternoon to India, from, good morning from, from Europe. So uh, actually, yeah, uh, as already in the introduction, <coughs> I'm, I'm uh, heading the IoT standards activities. So maybe on top of what, what has been said before, so what my, my role or what I'm actually doing is, uh, so we are, we are uh, developing standards, we are, we are influencing standards for the sake of, for the benefit of our company. However, so we're also bringing back the knowledge from standards into our company. And I think this is quite important also for uh, making the standard, making it uh, widespread and, and, and implemented as well. So because in, in companies, we will hear about this one as well, sometimes um, they're not aware about standards and, and this is uh, quite important as well. Okay, <clears throat> with this, um, I would like to go into the presentation. I hope the slides are visible. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, first of all, so Deutsche Telekom IoT business is actually so, uh, mainly in the area of connectivity. This is the reason why we have the SIM card here. Deutsche Telekom is actually a connectivity provider. Uh, however, uh, IoT is, is quite a, a, a huge uh, topic. And uh, usually customers are not only asking for connectivity, uh, even though the name, for example, within in the IoT, uh, there is IoT in the name, but it, it's still just a connectivity technology. Um, moreover, if you, if you really want to use a solution, uh, the solution the customer wants, he needs to have more. He needs to have devices, uh, he needs to have connectivity as one part. He needs applications. The applications are usually quite, uh, quite tailor-made and, and usually also you want to have some, some platforms where you display the results of the measurements of your, of your devices. So um, this is the, the main focus around. And uh, although we are, we are just connectivity provider, we try to let us serve our custom with solution from various areas and uh, that he gets the, the, the full solution. So this is also um, getting into the, into the challenges uh, area. So IoT is actually, it's an integration business. So it's not something that we can put a, a device on a shelf like, like operators are used to. So just and, and the customer passes by and say, oh, this is a nice IoT device, I just buy it. Um, pack uh, 100K of this device to my, uh, into my box, into my, uh, my chart, and, and I use it. It's actually really an integration business and uh, the integration business brings with me uh, along uh, that there are multiple different partners and stakeholders and, and uh, they are also coming along with um, their technology choices and, and various um, approaches to solve, to solve uh, uh, the, the problem to get a solution for the customer. So what are the challenges of a complex IoT system or ecosystem? Um, as already said, um, you can ask yourself, is there a simple IoT product, for example, which you can put just in a shelf and sell to the customer? So the simplest product I could find and which we also sold uh, in the past was, was those dash buttons, for example, where you press a button and then you, you, you uh, trigger a purchase action. However, even, even if this uh, device or this uh, solution uh, looks quite simple at the end, you also need to think about uh, all the processes behind which need to be triggered to, let me say, get the product, for example, to the customer. So this makes it quite, uh, it appears simple, but in, in fact, it isn't. In fact, um, the, 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 the solutions are much more, or the, the solutions customers ask in the context of IoT are much more, let me say, lively. 
So we, we have seen, for example, um, science uh, with um, varying content. You know, this is also something which you can see as IoT. We have lorries, for example, measuring the temperature of the goods uh, to have a quality check, for example, over the time uh, from rubber mowers or even access systems where you shut or open up and lock doors, for example, uh, smart parking systems and so on. If, if you look a bit more detailed into the into the area, it, it's um, it's, a, it's a, a process of integration of different um, uh, different um, uh, requirements. First of all, you need to start with understanding the customer problem, and um, once you have understood the customer problem, you need to make a concept, um, design for a solution, and so on. Um, you need to have partners, for example, developing devices or application for devices, for example. Um, and of course, you need to have also a, a nice dashboard somewhere or a cloud solution or a server solution or backend solution, however you want to call it, where you can display, for example, the, the results or even, for example, trigger actions or analyze data. And just one part of it is connectivity, so which is often forgotten, especially by operators. So just because NBIoT has IoT in the name doesn't mean it's IoT. So in reality, it's, it's really integration business with many different partners. And um, let me keep on, on this slide a bit more. Uh, I always explain, compare it, for example, with building up a house. Um, building up a house, for example, you have also different, uh, uh, different engineers or different um, um, workers or different contractors working on different solutions. The plumber, for example, works on, 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 the, on the tubing and if the plumber would have different tubings or could choose his tubes by its own, you know, it would be rather difficult also to um, um, to inter interwork with, for example, other other uh, other engineering partners, for example. Um, so in IoT, comparing this with IoT, for example, it's it's even worse because. Uh, in, in IoT, we have uh, protocols, we have different serialization formats, we have uh, different functionalities, and um, and a developer can hardly build on something uh, standardized. And this is the reason why standards are good stuff and uh, why people are looking for standards. However, if you have built your own solution from the from the very beginning, so if you have sold the solution, if you operate the solution, so um, it, it's not the end. Because uh, the customer might ask for future extensions, um, you need to have um, to maintain the software for various reasons, either to um, extend the functionality or for security reasons. Um, the device manufacturer need to have to hold spare parts, for example, because uh, some devices might get broken or you have a warranty case. And for example, you also need to operate um, the cloud solution and so on. So uh, with just delivering a solution, it's not the end. It's just a starting point. And uh, certain characteristics of IoT is also, for example, the, uh, that uh, especially customers want to extend their, their initial solution over the time. So for example, with a smart waste management <clears throat> solution where we just uh, let a customer, for example, just ask for, um, for measuring the volume of the, of the trash bins but later on, he came uh, came along and said, uh, "Can't we measure the temperature as well? Because sometimes the the um, the, the trash bins get get fire, and um, and then we we want to be um, informed about there is something with the trash bin, and so on. So this is at the end. It's not the end. And uh, over the time, of course, uh, there might be also the point that you change, for example, partners, or some partners might not be able to um, to." Um, any longer deliver services. So uh, this is the reason why, for example, the standards are important because it's hard to scale and, 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 and extend, for example, later on. So you have a high risk, for example, if a vendor, for a vendor login, for example, later on, if the solution is in the field for some time. And uh, even in the, in the construction phase or building up the solution, um, a lack of interoperability creates barriers in, in resulting in, in higher costs and, and, um, and efforts. Um, and also the stakeholder alignment is quite, um, quite an effort because if you have many different partners from device manufacturer, different software developers, it's quite uh, 
quite challenging to keep them all aligned and, and to exchange, for example, your, your ideas. Um, so then finally companies are start to waste a lot of time in solving uh, complex details, let me say, uh, instead of, uh, let me say, working on the actual IoT solution. Uh, what is meant by this? For example, also within VT, we, we had an own development, for example, for um, for some devices. And, and uh, so the, the engineers, they presented proudly. They have worked a long time, for example, on, on, on the solution, on, on basic functionality, which um, which nobody thinks of because it's not part of the solution as such. So for example, a device might not might not have all the time connectivity. So you need to store data uh, until, for example, connectivity is regained, for example, or they, they work on a solution to do software updates or firmware updates for the devices, which which is not actually part of the of the IoT solution, but it's just a, a basic a basic um, a basic functionality which should be there out of the out, out of the box um, and later on of course if you think about smart cities for example you need to have um, horizontal horizontal services you also want to interact for example with other companies and want to extend it for example smart waste management you want to to give some information also to smart administration for example and, and you want to also have for example information for the partner who is for example um, uh, collecting the trash, for example. So, so the, the, it's more or less endless. You know, you can think about IoT. However, if everything is built uh, on proprietary systems and and uh, just by one company without using a standard, it's it's quite quite difficult and it's not not really scaling at the end. So, yeah, the standard makes makes actually the difference. So if you think, for example, about um, HTML as one example, so the slides are based on, on uh, my, my colleague, uh, Oliver Ilhoff. He's, he was the product manager, for example, of an IT product in, in our company. Um, but I think that the example is quite good. For example, a web designer or developer who develops a website uh, in India, in US, or in European uh, Europe, for example, uh, he can do it without knowing all the customers. He's just doing it based on a standard, and then all over the world, uh, people can use the websites and the web services. So, and uh, the same should should happen also for IoT. Yeah. On the other hand, side and this is a bit of the risk and the, the, also the challenge we have in, in our organizations or as standards creating organizations or standards uh, developer. Um, Sometimes uh, people are moaning about uh, claiming there is there is no IoT standard, um, and and then of course what, what st starts is, is a kind of activity saying okay we needed to develop a, a new standard, and uh, at the end we, we have a situation where we have one more standard more and the fragmentation is, is getting increased, so and this is a bit also also the risk for uh, in the context of standards, so also here there is a kind of competition and, and sometimes is a lack of that uh, people are doing their homework and looking first uh, what's already there and what's useful uh, to be used. So this makes it uh, quite challenging for, for developers or, or companies to finding the, the right path through the channel of IoT. So uh, I created this picture, for example, uh, because uh, over the time I talked to many managers, uh, customers, and also internal and external engineers, for example, um, some are attracted by big brands. So because we have uh, company X, uh, it's doing the job and it's doing a great job. At the end, you stick with the company. So it's not really a standard. It's sometimes it's, we call this quasi standard. Um, so it's not openly developed uh, together. Uh, then we have also those, uh, uh, those pictures in, in Europe, we use this also for, for, for kids, you know, uh, to find out, let me say, there are some, some some activities there, you know, and, and uh, however, it's not really useful to have this categorization sometimes with uh, tables. If we go along the st towards standards, I've, I've put some there. Uh, <clears throat> it's um, so we have some some well known standards we, we hear quite often in the context of IoT. Um, some of them are, let me say, just protocols which are often used. Uh, 
but uh, there is also a difference between them. So uh, the bad thing with, with this uh, cloud solutions or platforms, because some, some companies, they start with uh, selecting a platform. So I've, I've seen numbers uh, that there are around 1,600 platforms. And also within DT, for example, colleagues, they, they, they spent a lot of time, half a year, uh, to, to evaluate, for example, different platforms. Um, and, and then this, they came up with, um, with a short list of two or three or one, uh, one platform they want to choose. And I said, um, doesn't this worry you that you have uh, chosen the wrong one? Because uh, if you have 1,600 platforms and you choose select one of them, probably um, the, the number or the, the likelihood that you have failed is 1,599 uh, compared to one. So, if, so it can be the likelihood being wrong is higher than the likelihood being right. So um, I'm, I'm mentioning this because uh, also in the light of some technical aspects of 1M2M and why it's good to have this standard because uh, the problem is if you want to change, for example, some of those solutions later on, you, you have to get, to get away from, from a certain provider. And 1M2M, for example, in this context helps you to, to um, keep this flexibility. So, sorry. Yeah. Also in the area of standards, um, there are different standards and not all of them provide really interoperability. So um, this is also something you need to take care of once you create a solution. So one, one word to 1M2M and why, why we are betting on 1M2M is simply, um, first of all, there's, there are many companies contributed to the standard over the time over the time. So this standard is established since um, 2000, uh, 2012. And even before some activities already started in Etsy in, in Smart m for example, which then had been transposed to this partnership project, um, catch word partnership project. Um, one m is, is broadly supported by real standards development organization. So all across, all across the world. So this is the same, the same principle we have with the GPP, which is a quite successful uh, role model, let me say, because um, those national or regional SDOs, they transpose the standards into regional standards or regional, regional norms and, and making them really uh, normative and, and binding. So those are the organizations. So it's, um, it might not be known to all of you, but, uh, but this gives uh, credibility and also some, some um, uh, there's some framework also uh, from from low point of view. So uh, now I want to jump a bit into a technical part of of this presentation as well to give you also some some insights for those of you who don't know exactly where there is actually one and two M where does it play a role in, in the from technology point of view. So actually, usually what we are talking about is ILT applications. So the application is something like, uh, okay, I'm measuring the temperature. So please also mind this is the field device. Um, if you have a field device and, and you write an application, an actual IoT application, it's usually just measure the temperature and send it to some, some cloud solution or some cloud on, on the other hand side. Um, and there you have a dashboard with the application. So it might be presented by company X or company Y, Y server, for example, or server solution. And, and this is a matter of choice. And this, these parts are highly individual. So you cannot, let me say, have it out of the box. So this is something you need to align with, with the customer and, and his, let me say, requirements in the T solution. On the other hand side, we have the connectivity layer. So this gray layer here is uh, it's highly standardized. So you can uh, buy connectivity more or less out of the box. You get a module, for example. Um, so the connectivity layer, this actually the connectivity is then between the device and, and the base station. So this is standardized, but from the base station or from how the data are getting from the network to, to your application is, is still open. And there we see the, the layer in between. So we have many different protocols Many of them are also, let me say, dedicated to IoT. So some of them have the name in, within, for example. But a protocol is not a solution. As you can see here, um, 
if you have different partners, think about the building up the house. So you you need to have to al alignment between, for example, uh, different engineers on, 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 the, on the device set and also on the infrastructure side, because uh, the one if the one the device developer wants to choose MQTT, the the cloud solution as a developer might not be happy because he wants to have another protocol. So and with this individual standards which is just solving just a bit of the IoT problem, you're running into a arbitrarily um, non-interoperability problem because you can see there's a, a permutation of many different uh, possibilities you can connect those. So we call this actually service layer and, and this is actually where 1MTEM hits in. 1MTEM is a, ser a service layer solution which tries to solve the problem. Um, before going into further details, I, I want to give you some analogy with uh, with the what made, for example, applications in, in the in the mobile phone business really great. It was actually the uh, the the operating system, which can be also seen as a kind of service layer in between. So, because the operating system of a mobile phone, for example, gives you application APIs, um, application programmer, programmer interfaces, for example, APIs towards the application, the application can freely use without, let me say, thinking about the connectivity. If, if you send, for example, a message via Signal or, for example, WhatsApp or, or whatever messenger, for example, the messenger, you don't need to take care of which connectivity you, you, you use un underneath, for example, or if you access, for example, location data, you don't need to think about, okay, what, what brand is the, the GPS receiver built in in the mobile phone? The operating system is taking care and the abstraction is done by the operating system towards the IoT application. So the same, the same, let me say, idea is behind one and two M. If you have on the one hand side the IoT device and you have something in between, we call this, uh, for example, on, on the on the device side, um, middle node uh, CSE. CSE stands for Common Service Entity. It provides you just interfaces towards the application and towards the connectivity. And you don't need to take care about what's inside as long as you have a, let me say, certified or uh, along the standards implemented CSE. And you have also an open interface between the this layer, which is underneath the cloud and, and the actual cloud solution. So one in turn does not do any dashboards and any, any, any fancy stuff, which is, well, let me say, fancy for the for the customer, this is actually done by the cloud solutions on top. But you can interface just with this, um, let me say, socket like a plug in the socket, and you don't need to take care if you change change anything underneath. So, but it's not only having APIs because um, there are many, let me say, technologies around also claiming we have APIs and then everything is done. No, it's not. As I said before. Um, those common service entities, they also provide services to, to the application on top. As said before, my, my colleagues, for example, um, internet, they developed, for example, an own solution for software updates. They, they own, own, also developed an own solution for, for storing data, for example, if connectivity is not that yet there. So therefore, the, the, uh, the basic stuff, which is not really something which is actually the IoT solution, um, it's, it's basic functionality just to get the data from the left side to the right side. And actually, this is actually what one term is doing. So one term is providing so-called common service functions, which are common, the, the word is common, to many different IoT applications, and therefore you can use it without having the need to, to reinvent the wheel, so to say. So, yeah, now we those have been a bit the, the benefits of, of one employment of a standard you know because the point is not only the standard as such so you also need to choose the right standard for the right solution and and one term is providing really a from the chunk size a, a big part of of problems are being solved which you don't need to think about anymore if you have the um, one term implemented so but here we are coming to to the point itself, there is the market demand because I'm often asked, for example, uh, oh, my customer, they didn't ask for 1M2M. 
of course, they didn't ask for 1M to M because actually this is this is actually something which the, the integrator should, should think of because it's his business to, to integrate solutions in a way that they are scaling and that the efforts for integrator are low and that he also is able to earn money. So the customer will probably not ask you um, for, for a standard because this is something a service the integrator need to let me say provide to the customer itself and and another point is for example um, the the standard itself doesn't sell so of course we are promoting one m to m but uh, when I'm selling a standard to a customer he, he doesn't mind about the the, the, the the standard he he just wants to 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 make this wants to have the solution working so there is a, a bit of guidance missing and the guidance should come for, from, from the integrator and from the community. So, um, so you as, a, as an integrator or as a, as a provider, so this is, uh, let me say, a request to all of us. So from the operator side and also for the integrators, for the developers and so on, device manufacturers, that they are promoting the standard and also the benefit for the customer for interoperability. So you can say, look, if I'm not there, you know, because I'm, I'm on vacation or someone can cannot help or my company gets bankruptcy, for example, someone else can take over and can integrate the solution for you. And of course, uh, the solution also for the integrator or the, the benefit for the integrator is also that uh, the three points we had before, the scalability is much better and, and the efforts for you as an integrator is also getting lower. However, we, we need to educate the customer in this sense. So now you could ask, for example, um, other big, let me say, standards like 3GBP. So they, they are quite quite famous, you know, and, and they, they are running by themselves. So why are, um, they, they are not getting promoted. So everyone knows about and everyone is using it. But the situation is a bit different. For example, because the 3GBP, there are just a limited number of companies integrating, for example, network equipment. Um, so at the end, they are writing standards just for a handful of companies, while in the IoT business, you have many integrators who should use, who, who are, let me say, target group of those standards and who should use their standards. And uh, as long as those, those companies are not aware about, about the standard exists, they probably also will not integrate it. So this is the reason why, for example, sometimes, um, especially developers, um, asking okay i've never heard about one term but actually this is something we need to get in touch with and which is coming along with um, what is coming along with uh, this this uh, subject is also currently um, we in a kind of first mover problem with standards because um, it's also kind of chicken egg problem so as long for example as companies are not implementing uh, solutions um, of course, they will not, they are also not getting known. So it, it needs some, some kind of critical mass where companies need to, let me say, work on, on one term and integrate them, for example, in, into devices. So the, the red cylinder we have seen before, it needs companies to provide, for example, okay, I'm providing a CSE, which can be implemented. And, and ideally this, this for example, is um, one of the terms CSEs are implemented even in the chipset. So the lower the integration, the better it is for the, for the rest of the community. So every let me say, company need to find its own stake in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this area. And then of course, we have also the, the, the business application. Um, so this is uh, the other side. This is more on the, on the cloud, on, on, the, on, the, on the backend side, for example. Okay, so and this is also a picture for, yeah, we, we have seen because if, if you ask a developer, he's usually you looking at, at GitHub. Um, is there any open source software I can take? Can I, can I take a library for MQTT, for example? And it's easy to get some, some libraries for protocols, for example, and implement them. And, and for one term, it's not yet there. So what we also need there is some, some implementations uh, who, who are um, creating the market. And um, so this, um, this is something, a, a kind of community effort also, which is growing over the time. So of course, also the, 
what we saw internally, what needs to be done is uh, to, to not have this frustrated, for example, developers, is we, we need to have some let me say, key players which are doing kind of education also for, for, the, uh, for the other employees and for the developers to, to, to give them an, an insight or an overview about how to use the standard, like as we had it before with the, what is a one in term as such. So, and, and then they can look up for, let me say, can I find a CSE somewhere? Can I find a training and a tutorial there? So this is something which, which uh, is, is one of the downsides because the, the standards developers as such, they just developed that standard, but they do not implement this. So now we are coming to the question, is, is the choose worth to squeeze it? I think yes, because otherwise this IoT business is, is is not not really scaling, you know, and and, um, and and people and developers and the whole community gets disappointed because, um, as we have seen it before, building up a house, for example, where nothing is standardized, would be also become quite cumbersome. So if if the pipes are having a standard and you can connect them together and you can also ask your friend, okay, can you can you continue with the work? You can also hand this over to another partner, for example. Uh, you also reduce the, the interaction between the different partners because you don't need to exchange all the time uh, different specifications, how you want to have, a, have the serialization, for example, and, and, and the solution being developed. Because large parts of, let me say, what actually is necessary for IoT is already implemented or standardized in, in one and two for example. You just need to implement this. So what, what is, let me say, the way out of this, of this area? Um, so you can minimize the, the risk um, by, by creating a framework and, and to ensure the standard will be used and adopted in the support, for example, support of open technology standards, for example, in public projects. So I think India is, is, is also one kind of role model in, in this area or the Indian government by, by giving this framework, for example. So we have other, other examples as well, where let me say that the community grew up, for example, uh, quite good is for example, Korea. Korea was also one of the, the, the countries very early um, promoted the use of, of 1M2M and, and set this as a, as a framework for, for, for the nation or for the country itself. Um, and of course, it's not that easy because uh, of course, standards, implementing standards also create some, some, some efforts. However, on the long term, it's paying back. And uh, moreover, so if, if, if you promote one term to being used or the standards being used, it's not the end. Also, the next step is then um, for interoperability, there's also the, um, the point of, can I rely that let say, the other partner has implemented it correctly? And for example, Korea, what, what they did is also the, they also have been the first country of uh, integrating, for example, or establishing a certification scheme, which is now taken over by GCF Global Certification Forum. So for example, companies who, who have implemented 1M2M, so you can implement it once and you can sell it quite often. This is the, the, the idea behind uh, scalability. And if you have also a certification that your product is, is let me say, close to the standard or is, is complying to the standard, so the, the partners, they can also <clears throat> be ensured that their solution, um, the solution at the end will be working and you, you have a hassle-free uh, interworking also with your other partners. Um, sadly to say that Euro Europe, for example, is, is unfortunately a bit lagging behind in this area. Um, so that uh, is especially the Asian area is, is much, much ahead in this, in, this, in this area of public guidance, for example. And of course, what can we do as well? Um, um, companies who implemented, for example, uh, 1M2M, they need also to show the implementations. You know, if you have created an INCSE on, on your cloud platform, so then you, you should be vocal about this and you should be also, of course, also in your own interest that other partners can use them. Um, and you, that, let me say, there is a, a lively, um, ecosystem is, is emerging. And uh, another part, which is, which is uh, from my point in particular important is, is also the, the device side. Um, 
So for example, implemented CSEs implemented, for example, directly on, for example, our chipsets of, of connectivity solutions would be something which would be quite valuable and would be quite scaling. If, um, if you have implemented, uh, let me say, the solution right on the silicon itself, you know, it gives you the possibility to scale much, much better. So there is uh, some activities ongoing, for example, on, on this side in, in the safety project where, for example, Bob Flynn with Exactor is, is contributing to. And uh, we have some, some open source solutions, for example, also in the, in the area of um, uh, the ocean project, um, for example, in Korea, where, where those communities emerge. So this is, I think, quite important and uh, we should, we should um, push those communities. Yeah, uh, one part is, um, which is also a bit the risk or downside of the, of the whole standards creation process, uh, or people just looking first time on, on, on one of them specifications. Uh, the specifications as such are just, uh, just uh, a source for implementers. This is nothing, let me say, a developer comes along with or can easily easy use. So what, what's necessary, and this is something uh, 1M2M or the community in 1M2M is working on, and it also, let me say, developers are asked to contribute this as well, um, that there is a, a modern look and feel uh, for developers because they are just interested how to use 1M2M. So this, you can compare it with the standards development is like uh, the, the engineers building up a car and engineering the car while the driver does not need to, to be aware about all the integrity details which are inside, the developers, they just want to look from the outside world, which pedal I need to press to do the right thing. And um, in, in this sense, 1M2M can still improve to provide uh, a modern, a modern uh, documentation where the developers can, um, can speed up with. And this is something also, some colleagues in, in one term are hardly and, and um, working quite uh, quite extensively to also uh, make this more more usable. So the, the new website of one term is is one contribution already to this. Uh, however, it need to be filled up with content. Yeah, overall um, there is many different small parts which of course need to be worked on. And if you come back on, 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 the, on the main question, is, is the juice worth to squeeze it? Um, yes, it's worth to squeeze it. Uh, if it takes some time, there, of course, there are these risks there. And uh, however, on the, long, on the long run, I think uh, it's, it's quite, quite important that we continue with this journey because uh, for scalability reasons, there's just, just the possibility to use standards. And, with regards to the question, which standard to use, um, I've seen, so I'm, I'm in this IoT standards area, I've seen many different standards, of course, but um, yeah, um, the, the standard providing most in, in this area is actually one and time. And I think this quote uh, quite nicely fits into this, into this, into this answer or to this, uh, to this view. Because as we have seen before, there are many protocols, but a protocol is not a solution. And the whole is created in the sum of its part. Okay, with this, um, I conclude my presentation and um, yeah, I'm still in time. And I think that the floor is open for questions. Chakad. Thank you, Mr. Nobeker. I think that was an excellent uh, deco of uh, the 1M, 2M uh, status and also many things that many of us uh, uh, feel about uh, the standardization and its uh, go to market and its adoption and uh, also you know this feeling that it's going to arrive but exactly when when will that critical mass of devices applications uh, of uh, sdos and ssos all uh, uh, rooting for that important fruit uh, since you referred to some fruit, fruits and juices here, that essential fruit, which will be the much higher uh, interoperability and as a result, much lower cost, uh, the risk and benefit that uh, effectively will uh, push along the 1M2M journey into what can be called more ubiquitous 
utilization on the ground. Clearly that is, uh, you've put it up very well. I really appreciated some of the suggestions uh, that you have brought along with, uh, especially the modern documentation, uh, because my uh, perspective continues to evolve. It's, a, it's an area in which uh, there are a lot of moving parts, uh, regulation, policy, players, um, and uh, so on and so forth. But uh, creating modern documentation and making it easy for DevOps is clearly one of the very, very significant pieces. Yeah. Uh, and I think you picked it up very well in that area. How long it takes for SDOs, et cetera, uh, is gonna be another question. And how long will it take for countries to come down hard on uh, making it mandatory, normative standards, et cetera? I think that is an evolving question too. But let me do something here because I see there are uh, a lot of people in the audience and uh, they have some questions too. So I'm going to ask uh, if uh, there are questions from Mr. Kulkarni and uh, unless there is a better method that uh, the organizers want, I'm just gonna suggest that uh, uh, are they going to open up their microphones or uh, uh, Maybe I can just speak them aloud. How would Shalji, you like to just mention the name? Name, please, yeah. and uh, read the question out. And if that, I think that. Thank you. Great. Thank you for clarifying that, Mr. Nobeker, uh, Mr. Kulkarni on the messaging chat box is wanting to know uh, which sector is one M two M usable in, and I think, uh, yeah, yeah. First, I will let you answer, and then we'll see if there's more discussion needed, Mr. Nobeker. Mm. I think um, if you remember the, the slide I had before with the operating system. So I think um, one term is not made. So of course there is not, not one fits all solution for it, but uh, it, you, you can cover a large part. And actually what one term is made for is one term is actually solving the problem with uh, communication of devices of IoT devices. So. And like the operating system, for example, is not let me say made for a particular let me say messaging or social media or something like this. Also, for example, uh, one term is made for not, not for a particular area. Um, as a technician, you know, I'm, I'm I'm always let me say two hearts beating in my chest uh, because we have from the marketing people we we have the categorization saying okay this is the categorization home this is the 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 the, the vertical, for example, industry. This is the vertical smart city. This is the vertical, I don't know, uh, variables, for example. In fact, from a technician point of view, whether you measure the temperature in a house, in, in an industry plant, for example, or in a, in a lorry, or or on a on a for example on a variable, it doesn't matter. It's always a, it's always a temperature. So one end term is actually there for also enabling the standard as such is, is enabling or should shall enable exactly, for example, is cross vertical integration. And uh, for example, if you think about smart city, what is a smart city? In a smart city, let me say, even is, is the, the most cross vertical use case at all. Because if you have a, a lamp post, for example, okay, you might say, okay, this is a smart city, but if you, let me say, a, a car is passing by, it's automotive. So at the end, uh, how shall the, the car speak to the lamppost, for example, without a standard? So, and, and therefore you, you connect those different verticals. However, what we have seen most, I think, is, is uh, one term being applied in, in smart cities. I think also because it, it's most the, the most handsome, let me say, um, standard for this vertical. But as already said, it's not, it's not dedicated for a specific vertical. Does this answer your question? So you are mute, Sharad. So yes, thanks. I think you do address the matter. Uh, effectively, a simpler articulation, Mr. Kulkarni, is that 1M2M is not a sector specific standard. In my opinion, 1M2M is a method, a mechanism for the common service layer implementation that can benefit uh, virtually any device and any application domain. And uh, it's the, the important thing, and this is what we say when we talk about waiting for the scale to arrive. 
when will there be a demonstrable benefit to the to the whole story of more reusable code uh, more reusable and interoperable platforms and solutions and so on and so forth so really the there is no it's not so sector specific although one m2m is doing a great job now of uh, uh, getting deeper into every sector to more or less have an implementation specific uh, progress as well okay i hope uh, that gets us forward with mr kulkarni and then there's mr gossard who's uh, from john deere and uh, his question uh, mr nobecker is if you want to consider the standards where each sector has its specifics how do you integrate the requirements of each sector into your horizontal requirements and then he continues on to ask india and europe have similarities regarding the legislative framework certification and homologation will drive the developments how do you ensure for example safety functions with 1m2m so one question is about how do you make the requirements horizontal when there are so many vertical sectors uh, in 1m2m and the second is Uh, similarities of legislative framework between india and eu can uh, certification and homologation drive the 1m2m implementation yeah on, on the on the first on the first part let me say of um, um, different requirements from different verticals um I, i think that the reason why i use this this example with temperature for example is uh, at the end if it comes down to iot the the data you send are quite um quite the basis you know a temperature is always a temperature it's just the context which is different and um one time is taking care let me say to exchange the data in in a, in a, in a common format which is a kind of unification of, of so that the one side can understand the other side um of course there is the, the other part is is more the the, the interworking um one term is, is is not let me say from from the ivory tower so so the, the engineers have been already quite quite aware that there are let me say already existing implementations out there and there are let me say so called inter interworking solutions so one term has standardized a, a couple of let me say interworking towards modbus for example so um modbus is a very very frequently used protocol for example for for meters and so on in, in the industry area so this is the reason so where we have uh, interworking so of course modbus is made for for rather short um short distance communication and, and there's an interwork while one and term is made for interoperability and also about connecting different verticals or over wide area networks so so there is this approach that at, at the end at the edge let me say you can have an, an interworking Uh, but you can have, let me say, overall in the wide area network, you can you can bet on one term. Um, so if if we would take over, if one and ten would take over all those requirements, so I think it wouldn't be possible because we we cannot. So that the, the picture with the cartoon we had, for example, is the reality. So we cannot avoid that. Let me say there are standards uh, there, and, and they are also there for good reasons, as as you said, for short range communication modbus is there and you have sort of you need to provide an interworking and then you can let me say use it to cross vertical to um, to link to glue let me say the different verticals together by one term I, i hope i made myself clear yeah yeah thank you so uh, clearly uh, if it could be simplified clearly if it could be much easier for people to uh, pick and uh, deploy the framework both on the device side the the common service layer side and uh, uh, the application side it would be much faster and i do agree there is a question coming but i am kind of jumping that gun uh, mr nobaker to make a point to you that it is still too complicated in my opinion to be easily adopted and uh, unless the plug and playability becomes that much more touch and feel uh, it's uh, it to have some challenges in adoption but uh, i don't want to completely uh, take over this uh, question that uh, already theory has who says 
one M to M is able to do a lot of things and maybe too much, uh, which brings complexity. Shouldn't we have a very simplified layer to be able to IO to be able to develop IoT applications as simply as mm -hmm. with MQTT, for example? So I will hand this over to you also, Mr. Norbecker. You already heard me a little bit. Jump the gun, uh, but your view. Yeah, this is this is a kind of um, yeah. There is a joke, but I'm not not able to translate it. I think probably in English, about the illusion of having having the choice. You know, if 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 your wife gives you you gives you a red tie, you know, and a blue tie, and the next day you you wear the blue tie, and and your wife says, ah, why didn't don't you like the red tie? You know, and this, she is disappointed. But the same here, you know. Um, but you need to understand those standards, like the three GPP standards or one in terms standards, like a toolbox. So this um, this toolbox, you know, the standard. If if you read the standard, of course, you find a lot of functionality there. And if you if you think about, okay, let's start the message to implement, uh, then of course you you get overwhelmed, and then then we are back on the on the on the slide with the disappointed developer. Um, mm. On the other hand, side it's not necessary as as, as the uh, as the question already indicated. You know, you don't need to implement everything. All and everything. If you can start with a, with a small, with a small, let me say, um, basic set of functionality, and can extend later on. And this is actually the, the toolbox the standards give you. So just, of course, you need to have some mandatory, let me say, implementations or some mandatory functionality being being implemented. But uh, many, let me say, functionalities which are there, like for example, now one of them is working on on GDPR compliance, you know, and and uh, and, and those stuff. This is not needed to be implemented yet. So if, if the customer asks for it, you can implement this, but you can start small. But the point is really with standard and one of them is if you have a, a let me say robust and certified solution, you know, you have developed it once and you can sell it off. And, and, and someone else can build up another functionality can add it on top. So it's, it's really something like building up a house brick by brick. Mm. Okay. Um more can be said, but I would like to move on to Marshall's question about how secure is 1M2M from a cybersecurity perspective? Um, <clears throat> the question of security is always a nice one because security is always a, a, a system question. Um, what 1M2M provides, let me say, is, is of course a system security by design as much as, much as possible. So there is a security specification available in 1M2M. And, and those are those, of course, uh, if you look at one of some open source projects, they, they, they have not implemented security, but uh, from a standard point of view of security, the solutions are there, which shall be used or can be used. So um, also this is very comprehensive specification with let's say also a lot of options you can implement, um, but basically, Security by design would be there. It just need to be implemented, and, and this is also, uh, of course, you, you need to have this freedom. You, know? you need to, you you shall not understand the standard as let me say the holy bible, and you need to implement the whole the whole book. You just need to implement all, on the need basis. If you have, for example, a small, uh, for example, a small sensor just measuring the temperature, or in a trash can, for example, of course you you don't need to have let me say. Uh, a SIM-based authentication there or something like uh, which also is costly and for for example also complex um, you just implement what's needed in a specific area and also from the point of security of course there, there are certain let me say aspects where some some functionality need to be taken care of more and some less mm. i'm going to make another point in this area mr Nobeko, at the end but uh, that is yet forming I'm going to just uh, move on to first um, Mr. Allison's question to you, uh, who agrees with the points that you're making, but he says, uh, I would like to add that it might be reconsidered the approach of this uh, more, you know, tech architecture protocol interfaces type focus. Instead, should 1M2M spend a lot more time on making things work in actual domains is what I guess he's uh, getting at. And I think uh, personally, I again go very strongly with that opinion that whilst uh, 
the 3GPP standards belong to one particular sector, one industry, that's telecoms, few players, everybody obeys the law. Whereas uh, IoT and M2M are spread across so many vertical sectors, hundreds and thousands of use cases, uh, maybe the same number of players, uh, no real mandate, and as a result, uh, very little uh, followership at this point in time. So to bring in followership, let's simplify life. Let's not go so long after protocols, interfaces, and architectures. Let's sit down for a while and make a, I think, is, is it is it concluding, uh, is it coming to that conclusion, Mr. Nobeka, that we need, a, we, do, we have the Bible, but we need a very, very small summary of that Bible to give to people saying, if you are implementing a, a weather sensor, then you need only two pages, not 2000. Yeah, this is something actually on, on this, let me say, <laughs> there's, we, we have this um, developer guides. So those developer guides have been existing already as well, where let me say some, some of the companies are, have been contributing the developer guides, explaining how to use it. Uh, of course, unfortunately, it's also not in the fashion, let me say, it's also a document you need to read. So it's not uh, 20,000 pages, it's just uh, 20 pages sometimes. Um, I think what, what's more the point is, um, it's always easy to say, okay, one m shall do, or this and that should, should, should do. Um, but I need to understand that one m is actually a, a community as well. So it's a community of companies contributing. Um, in, compared to any open source project in a, in a formal context. So it's an SDO, so you have, you have to be a member of this SDO and so on. And it gives you also some, some of course, it might be a bit cumbersome to, instead of, let me say, just writing a, a two or three lines of code and, and, and putting it open source. Here, you can, on the other hand, say, be, be sure that, let me say, your development stays within the standard and will not, you need to redo your application after after next, uh, let me say, someone else has, has contributed to. Um, it's always, let me say, there a lot, that there's a lot of light. There's also sometimes a bit of shade, of course. Um, but I can just invite you, you know, to, to contribute. So if, if you, for example, so one m 2 m website and, and the people organizing or administrating one m 2 m TSDSI, Etsy, and so on, the organizations, they are quite open, for example, to uh, to reference to, for example, if you have done an implementation and reference to your, let me say, your work you have done, for example. So this would be also a contribution which not requires to be, be a member of one m 2 m Thank you, Mr. Nobecker. I think that is a good answer to that question. Uh, but uh, following very closely are uh, two comments, uh, one from Theory, who's commented earlier, and then also from Bindu. And I think they're taking after the same theme here. Is there any guideline on how to ease into 1M2M implementation, perhaps following the layered approach? That's one question. And the other one that is similar is, do you know if there are, this is Theory, earlier was Bindu, do you know if there are some work to create simple framework to, to create and deploy 1M2M applications? I think the matter that seems to stick today in this panel, Mr. Nobecker, is the fact that people need some kind of an enabler that has, if you want to hear it that way, that is like a fully working framework. So mm -hmm. when you uh, take that framework, it's like a toolkit. And what you do at your end and what you get at the far end uh, needs to have, in my opinion, uh, the plug and play type workability for DevOps to absorb it and for DevOps to say, wow, this is crazy. I just need to program towards this input and it delivers. Uh, towards the CSL, and then the CSL delivers to the application. I get all sorts of traces and logs. I get the security that I need. I don't have to implement anything. I know I'm more or less speaking uh, what looks like uh, the, the, the what should you, sugar coated story of what it yeah. could be. But I have a feeling that people are getting to that point, uh, and I turn it over to you, Mr. Nobecker, that they need a toolkit that works. Yeah, those actually those toolkits are already out there. So, but the the point is how, how to get the the nits and grids together. 
So this is also the reason why, why I'm doing, let me say, those webinars and, and also internally, that's what I said before in, in my company. And uh, we have, let me say, some, some key players, key persons who, who spread the news and who spread, who educate the other people. Um, this, is, this is approach we, we have taken because one of them, you know, this is like DSDSI and, and this, those, uh, those standard development organizations, they have not infinite budget. And, and actually their main core business is actually creating standards. It's not, it's not let me say, educating people to use those standards. It's more up to the companies contributing to it. And, and my contribution to this, let me say, from, from Deutsche Telekom side as a member of one and term is to, to work on those webinars and to, to educate people like this webinar. Another colleague from mine is, for example, also um, contributing uh, he, he has written his own CSE, for example, and uh, has put it open source, this is the ACME CSE. Um, so there is a lot of ongoing, but of course, our, our let me say from company point of view, our resources are, are also just limited. So uh, what I, let me say, looking forward, and my vision is a bit also, and I'm also betting strongly on India. So I think uh, you are probably the greatest developer at all in India. And uh, that they also, let me say, contribute and let me say, feedback their, their developments into 1M2M to a certain extent. And um, what is 1M2M also doing to, let me say, make it easier to, to implement this or to uh, 1M2M and to use it is, for example, we, we have a lot of, um, from Etsy, there is a, a crew which is doing uh, developer workshops and, and to, has done it with uh, some universities, for example, in India and Hyderabad and, and also other organizations. They are constantly on tour, for example, to um, to bring the specific knowledge into, into the market. Um, however, it's uh, still something in development. And as, as said before, it, it's a bit of chicken egg problem. So I've also seen the same, the same problem with, for example, 3G in the past. Everyone was asking about 3G and GPIS, you know, is, is GPS or Edge worth, worth doing it because 3G is there and it, it took some time and this is something the market decides. Unfortunately, I have not a crystal ball. Very well. I see that uh, you have uh, really enriched the audience, uh, Mr. Norbecker, and now there are no further questions. So uh, I would like to first and foremost, thank you for your very valuable presentation and then the views. Sure. Sharaji, sorry, there's one, one more quick question from Mr. Rajesh Kapoor. Can we get that in? Of course, please. I cannot see it, but ah, please, yes. So he question. says, are there, uh, Mr. Rajesh Kapoor is asking, are there open generic code contributions with description which others can reuse? Yeah, this was, <clears throat> I, I was, <clears throat> if, you, if you look up in the modern term website, there, there's also some, some links and some information, for example, for those open source projects I mentioned. Uh, one of the biggest open source projects, for example, is, is in, in Korea. It's uh, it's uh, Ocean uh, Mervios, Ocean Mervios. If you type it in Google, it's and you 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 are right there. So it's a big open source project where you open source code is ready, so you can get a CSE there for NCSE. Another open source project is in Europe. It's in Eclipse um, Eclipse Foundation. It's uh, OM2M, for example. Um, so there, there, there is a small project on, on, on smaller devices, for example, in, in ATIS, which is also an open source project. Um, it's called um, OS IoT, for example. But this information you, you should find also on, on the website in, in one and time. Uh, yeah, and hopefully much more to come as well, also from India. In India, there's, for example, CDOT, uh, which is a company which has done uh, I think one of the the best uh, CSEs, which are closest to the standard, and, and there's a lot of knowledge there in India from CDOT. That is very true, Mr. Norbecker, and thanks very much for adding those other names uh, for Mr. Kapoor. The Ocean Open Source in Korea, the Eclipse O, M2M, OS IoT, and you said more of those can be found on the website, but also you very rightly pointed out that I think CDOT has started to make some very big announcements about how they are prepared to uh, uh, allow uh, developers to use what CDOT has already built. Uh, and I'm sure that is going to provide some great support in time to come to these projects and to the implementation. Very well.
I think we are beyond the hour. And uh, once again, Mr. Naubaker, thank you very much for your valuable presentation, views, and your answers. Uh, Mr. I just want to see who are there now. Yeah. So, Mr. Mukherjee, would I be okay to hand this back to you? Thank you so much, Sharadji. Um, I think, thank you. Uh, uh, we've had two experts in Andreas and Sharadji uh, talking to us, and it's at a very opportune time, I think, um, because with India having introduced and adopted the 1M2M standard, uh, the, and at the same time, you know, industry would be looking at perhaps the first question I think was one of the perhaps a very good one which Mr. Kulkarni asked because a lot of verticals would be interested in going digital, uh, adopting IoT, and would be very interested to know about handshakes across verticals, which I think between the two experts have answered uh, uh, wonderfully. And I think it would be good for people to see this uh, these, uh, this discussion on YouTube in the future also it'll be a good reference point at this point, uh, this session. So thank you, uh, both of you, and thank you to all our attendees from India and the continent. Thank you for your questions. Uh, thank you all. Look forward to seeing you in future also. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.